Welcome back to Telltale, another book review from us in our, our series of Philip K. Dick uh, reviews, starting with his first short stories. I'm Greg. I'm Emily. And uh, we'll get right into it then. Yeah. Uh, this... I liked this one a lot. You did? Yeah, already, like right off the bat. It okay. was pretty good. I liked this one. Well, let me tell them what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called The Skull. Mm -hmm. It was published in If science fiction magazine in September 1952 and it marked kind of a upgrade for Philip Dick mm -hmm. from Planet Stories if was a little more respectable and paid a little better mm -hmm. so um, already I think this was his what fourth let me check it was his third story ah. debatable you could in order of publication he had some stories that he wrote before Beyond Lies the Wub yeah. and sold them before Beyond Lies yeah. the Wub, but they didn't appear in print okay. until like a year later, Yeah, which is a little weird. Yeah. But I'm following order of publication. Mm -hmm. And while The Skull and the Gull were, The Skull and the Gun were both published the same month. So okay. it's a coin toss. It's okay. Like, so which it's one kind was of a toss second up and on which me. one was yeah. third. So um, give a, a brief synopsis. You have. A man who's a noted hunter mm -hmm. and people send him back in time for the purpose of hunting and killing a man. Who started this huge religious movement. Yes. That changed the world. So they want to eliminate the influence of this man on history. Mm -hmm. So they send this hunter back to um, terminate him. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like a hitman. Yeah. And it's... Uh... And not too, you know, aside from the fact that there's no robots, kind of similar to Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> and it was interesting, too, because it's set in, like, very, like, Cold War era. Yes. Well, 1952. Mm -hmm. That was when things were really getting started. There was a yeah. lot of, of McCarthyism in the nation. The Red People Scare. People were, were just going mm -hmm. insane with paranoia about that. Building yep. their bomb shelters and stuff like that. Yep. And it's certain that communists were infiltrating the United States and trying to undermine the government and stuff, which is all major themes that are playing off in this particular story, mm -hmm. which just makes it even more interesting. Yeah, that adds a dimension to it because the idea of someone going back in time and killing their grandfather, that's an old trope. It's, yeah. It's been around forever. Yeah. And I don't know how many stories were written before the skull was, but mm -hmm. it definitely was not a completely new idea. No, it wasn't a completely new idea, but I still really liked the way Phil K. Dick played with this idea. Yeah. And having this one figure be like the centerpiece of everything. Because like... Spoiler alert? <laughs> Should we spoiler alert it? If feel, you're going to do it. I feel, okay, there. spoiler alert. The person he's supposed to kill is actually himself. Like, mm -hmm. he's con he's basically contributed to this paradox that he's created. Yeah. Where he himself is actually the one who starts the religious movement. But I love... But that's 12 monkeys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think I know what that means. I'm just what? agreeing. 12 Monkeys. You've never seen the movie 12 I've Monkeys. I've never seen the movie oh 12 Monkeys. Oh my God. you got to go. I didn't know what you were referencing Joe, at all. Tell him to put it on. you got to watch 12 Monkeys. I will monkeys. see 12 Monkeys. It's, um, what's I've his seen name Futurama from... where I'm my own. Gr he's his no, own no, no, grandfather. No, no. This, is, this is a feature <laughs> film. Live actors. Bruce Willis mm -hmm. stars in it. Um, the guy from Pony, from Monty Python did Life of Brian. And oh, Holy yeah. Grail. Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, his most recent one was. The man who killed Don Quixote. Oh, yeah. And, of course, yeah. Terry Gilliam. There he is. Brazil. Gilliam. He did mm -hmm. 12 Monkeys. Okay. And that is an amazing movie. Yeah. It's actually a remake of a French film from the 1960s. Oh, interesting. Very cool. interesting. Yes. I like those kinds of tropes, too, where it's like they are they are the fate of themselves mm -hmm. kind of situations. Like in Futurama, that was one of my favorite things where Fry is his own grandfather. Uh -huh. Because like he just had to create this paradox in order to continue to exist. Like yeah. it became this whole big thing. And mm -hmm. I know it comes up a little bit in like um, Back to the Future where his mom starts putting moves on him instead of his dad. <laughs> That kind of stuff. But in this situation, he is the one he has to kill. <laughs> and it ends up being that there's just no way out of it. Either he 
either he rises to the fate or kills himself. Like, that's okay. kind of the ultimatum that you come down to once he started realizing what was happening. And it wasn't until, like, he was caught in the moment per se, like, moments before he's supposed to be encountering this individual, that he realizes the skull he is given to help him identify who this person is based off of the remains from this, like, I don't know, like, relic. Mm -hmm. Like, it's supposed to be relic remains that was kept in this church. Mm -hmm. He has the skull of this individual, and he looks at the teeth and the dental stuff and looks at his own teeth, and he realizes it's him. Mm -hmm. And so he's just like, ugh. And, but the whole thing is, like, it's unusual how he says one very small phrase that starts this religious movement. Mm -hmm. And it's it becomes international just because as he was shot and killed, he says this one phrase, which I won't spoil that one for you because <laughs> it's it's kind of a riddle almost. Mm -hmm. And everybody interpreted it as this like really wise truth, but they blew it out of proportion because all he is is just realizing he's coming to terms with his own fate and the fact that he made a paradox mm -hmm. in space time. Mm hmm. And it's just really, really interesting. And I like it, too, because it also goes through, like, all this research and effort he's putting in to try and figure out who this individual is, only to have it just be himself. Yep. So it's, like, all for naught, mm -hmm. essentially. But he, even though Philip Dick was using a, a pretty ordinary time travel paradox trope, um, he makes this story special by throwing in the politics of the era yes. and suddenly turns this into this exploration of the outsider in society mm -hmm. and how if you are a little bit divergent from the norm yes. that people want to kill you and, yeah. and are the kill it because it's and, different you know, mentality yeah, mm -hmm. totally comes into this and yes. adds this extra dimension to the story that it really you don't does get in other stories like this yes and i think i like it too because he's coming from you know hundreds and hundreds of years into the future mm -hmm. to like the 50s and I really appreciate that because there's like little hints of how different things are that help you understand why there's such a divergence between himself and everyone else yeah. and why everyone else is so suspicious of him being a communist yeah. because he is, he seems so other. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just really interesting. Well, yeah, he came from a totally different time. He would seem mm -hmm. really weird to people. I like the trial, the trial husbands and wives. Like you can have mm. a trial marriage mm -hmm. before you do the real thing just to make sure it works out. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a cool concept. People do that today. I know, <laughs> but it's not called that. It's not it's like a formality together. with yeah. contracts still. It's like, it's a whole other, it's just dating and trying mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Whereas that seems like it's like a societal construct yeah. that everybody's just cool with. Yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. But like they have those little references throughout that make it so make you so aware of how other this era feels to him. And I appreciated mm -hmm. that a lot because mm -hmm. he did seem so isolated and so obscure. Yeah. And like even language wise, he was having a really hard time mm -hmm. because he's like the slang is all different. Everything's all wrong. Well, yeah. Yeah. A um, lot of if you watch like Happy Days, which mm -hmm. took place back in the early 60s and the kinds of slang they used in, in yeah. that series, which came from that period. Golly gee. Nobody says that anymore. I don't know. I say <laughs> golly gee will occurs to myself. Yeah, but a, a lot of the others, I'm trying to think of some of them that they said in the Happy Days show that, that came from far that era. Out. I don't know. I'm thinking of like 80s stuff that's kind of lost its touch, I guess, like far out and totally yeah. tubular and yeah. like those kinds of things. I yeah, now nobody says that. Yeah, nobody and says it was, those things. At one time, it was really, really common. Mm -hmm. But the skull, you know, with, with Beyond Lies the Wub, his first published story, we had the um, well-known theme mm -hmm. of the playing around with reality and, yes. and messing with your reality that, mm -hmm. that would pervade almost all of Philip Dick's Crushing work. Crushing assumptions. With the skull, mm -hmm. you've got the paranoia. Yes. Which comes into a lot of Philip K. Dick work. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, having this, having been written and published when it was, at, mm -hmm. when the United States was at the height of paranoia. Yeah. 
um, it then makes sense why for the rest of his career, this would be an almost obsessive topic. Yeah. So in his first two, three stories, you see two, actually the, with the gun, we'll see another of his mm -hmm. obsessions or, or continuous themes. Mm -hmm. um, you see three of his major themes right off the bat yeah. in his career. Yeah. And so we're already seeing him develop towards... He's already got his style what, figured out yeah. by this point. I mean, he, I it. believe he would go a lot farther than these stories, but these stories are like laying a foundation mm -hmm. that he would continue to build on, I think. Yes. And that's why I'm doing this. Yeah. To that's see if I'm we can make those, figure in, out in those order. patterns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think that's a really cool one. I think it's a cool concept for us to be going through this series like this to, mm -hmm. because you do see the beginning, where they were and who they've become yeah. since then. And I love watching that journey happen. Mm hmm even if it's through fiction. <laughs> yeah. But then I also really like, I just like the way that it starts off just being the playful concept. And they just start asking these questions of, okay, so what is, what is this era, era going to look like to someone who is far beyond it already? Who probably doesn't even remember it from history books. I love that they play with that concept. Or like with the whoop. How are these two completely different cultures of sentient beings going to interact based yeah. off of what we know of humans and what we can pretend we know of something that's so outside of us and so other? Mm -hmm. I love that, that, that he brings up those like questions that are very human questions of things that we always want to like, we always want to speculate that it's going to be the best of all possible worlds, but yeah. it is not because <laughs> right. we know humans are messy and we make mistakes. And, you know, if we make mistakes, other creatures and other living things can make mistakes or, you know, no one's infallible really. Mm -hmm. And I love that he plays with this infall, like this fallibility mm -hmm. with the, his uh, characters, which I mean, it probably comes naturally, but he takes it to just the edge of an extreme in yeah. each case. Yeah. Without like going over the edge quite. And then he like when he's ready to go over the edge, he just kind of cuts it off for you and leaves you mm -hmm. wanting more, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. So I like his writing style, though. And I have to oh, say yeah. the skull was probably my favorite just because of how the character developed. Like it was kind of predictable, mm -hmm. but you didn't care because it was entertaining to watch this character like struggle through this. Yeah. And get to the point of that you knew was inevitable. But, It'll be interesting to see where this stays in the ranking of Philip K. Dick works yes. as we go on. Yes. Because you, you have at this time only read three. Yeah, I've only stories. read three, and this is my favorite <laughs> of the three we've read. Uh -huh. So, like, yes, that will be fun to kind of, like, play with, too. To see there what Lots what of good better. things to come yet. I'm excited. And, of course, just like Beyond Lies the Wub, this, it's a short story. A little longer than Beyond Lies the Wub, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is, it's more than a short story. This one was a novelette. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is public domain. Yeah. How that happens, how someone as famous as Philip K. Dick, who only died in the 1980s, could fall into public domain is because a lot of the early science fiction magazines, they bought all the rights. Yeah. So, when they so went the out. authors didn't own the rights to their own stories. Mm -hmm. They sold it all to the magazine. And a lot of these 1950s magazines came and went really fast. Yeah. Now, if continued into the 1970s, but there are a lot of other magazines of that time period that just disappeared. Yeah. And because they were just little science fiction magazines that didn't last very long, the publishers that bought the publishers... Mm -hmm. Just put it out into the world. Now... Mm -hmm. own the rights they didn't bother to pay to renew it mm -hmm. so, so they went into there. public domain mm -hmm. and so mo you know most of his early work was short stories mm -hmm. and most of it is now in the public domain which is kind of fun <laughs> which is, for yeah, those of really us cool. who want really accessible great short stories and you can't afford to spend two thousand dollars on the folio society's complete short stories of philip k dick um, now, if you do want to own it in a book, I'm reading Paycheck. This is a trade paperback 
published in the 90s. Mm-hmm. I got to say half price books. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking the sticker off. Um, what did I pay? $14.95. I, yeah, I'm seeing these online for like $20 in, in this condition. So yeah. you can you can get a nice yeah um, edition of Philip K. Dick's short stories for your collection yeah. without breaking the bank. Yes, and if you're into digital... Project Gutenberg has quite a few of them. Yeah, free if you know if you Just are download. on a tight budget mm-hmm. and can't afford a, a beautiful collection. Or you of live in a tiny books. home and your entire <laughs> library has to be virtual. <laughs> yeah, there's that problem too. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's my problem right now. Oh uh, yeah, my books are taking over my living room. They're it's taking a nice over down here. <laughs> yeah, I see that. What a nice problem to have. Yeah, I got to build more bookshelves. Yeah. I, I just got a new floor. bookshelf. A friend of mine was moving and gave me their bookshelf. I was like, yes, oh, cool. perfectly fits where I needed it to. So I want to custom build this whole room. Yeah, that would be around. cool. Yeah. I need to with all my books. Yes. <laughs> yes. So anyway, that's all I got about the skull. Yeah, I definitely think that this is a recommend. I think it should be on a top tail for sure. Okay. Like this is really, this is a really good one. Okay. I'll put I it enjoyed there. this one. I, I enjoyed this one more than the Wub, but I think a lot of that too is because the Wub itself is such a grotesque character, though it's complex. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of a bit repulsive. Whereas this is a guy you really sympathize with his situation. Yeah, and I I still love how Beyond Lies the Wub messes with your. Reality. I do love that, yeah. but the character, the main main subject is less. Uh, I think less. You can't really sympathize with it that no much. it's too short to really get into and it's the too characters. foreign like the creature itself like the wub is too yeah. foreign i think in like in its build there's so much that you can't relate to with it other than the fact that it's sentient whereas this guy is like he's just had it rough and can't catch a break yeah in a lot of respects and mm-hmm. then it just keeps getting worse where you're almost like relieved mm-hmm. that he has to die in the end because <laughs> That's the only way he gets an out mm-hmm. and gets to relish in the fact that those who sent him there will have to deal with this in the future. Yeah. While they try and they fail, they mm-hmm. completely yeah. cause the whole thing they were trying to prevent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he gets to relish in that. And it's kind of fun. Uh huh. But yeah. Okay. That's all I got. That's it. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later. Like us and subscribe to us and leave comments and watch us on Instagram and Facebook and check out our website. We'll We'll see see you next time. time. Bye.